Hi, I'm going to be giving a quick tutorial about how to hack Minesweeper with a tool I developed here called Function Hacker. Right now it's an alpha version and it's available on my website. You can look in the description for the details. I'm the main developer on it, but Zelimir has made some valuable contributions as well. And so first off with Function Hacker, we need to attach to the Minesweeper. So you can do that by either clicking on Attach or you can click and drag this target icon which is easier. So I click and drag this target icon on a minesweeper and now Function Hacker is trying to attach to the process. And here is a list of all the DLLs loaded by minesweeper. So we want to attach to just minesweeper. So let's uncheck all of them and just disassemble minesweeper. So just use the default settings for the options and here it disassembles the the selected modules and it looks for functions within the code. So ones like these, well, this is a list of all the functions and internal functions like function calls from Minesweeper to another location in Minesweeper look like this because it's an offset inside Minesweeper. Meanwhile, there's DLL calls. For example, memory move in from msvcrt.dll. So now what we want to do is we want to hack Minesweeper, of course. So what we're going to do is we're going to, when you click Start Recording, it records all the function calls to this list of functions. So we hit Start Recording, we go to Minesweeper, and it's recording all the functions as we do this. So let's click on a spot, and we can see there's mine here, mine here, mine here, no mine here, no mine there no mine here, no mine here, and now I'm purposely going to click on a mine. Then I'm going to look for func a function which has been called only a single time. So now I lose the game, it explodes all the mines, and I go back to Function Hacker and I stop recording. Now what you see here is now it said Minesweeper the function at this address has been called 61 times. So if you look down here this is a plot on the plot of the call frequency versus time. So we can see, for example, right here is a pretty high call frequency, meaning lots of calls are happening around this time. So Function Hacker actually visualizes, can visualize the function call stuff here as well. But I'm not going to get into that. You can press and hold the left click and move your cursor through here at the same time it's updating the visualization up here. You can set the size of this cursor by holding down shift and moving the cursor then you can see this tail. The visualization up here are the function calls occurring between that little back thing and the main bar here. And the calls are visualized as lines with red being the source, blue being the destination of the function. But this is more just to be pretty and, and not a lot of function. So you can highlight regions by holding right click. Then you can, for example, see that in this region here, this function has been called 61 times. This function has been called 13 times. And now what we're going to do is we're going to look for that function, which is called only a single time when we clicked on the mine. So we click on filter. Now, we have a whole bunch of filter options here and a preview of the output. So we want to look at function was called between 1 and 100 times. We want to change that was called between 1 and 1. So now it's telling us we're going to have 117 calls after filtering and 117 functions after filtering. So we do apply and create new list. So now up here we have two tabs. This one has our original data. This one has our filter data. So if we look here, we can see there's a group of functions called around here. There's a group of functions here. And around here was actually when we clicked on the mine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explode this region. So I'm going to do filter, clip data to selection, and this has reduced it down to 66 functions. And now we can see details of the function calls. So we can see an event happened here followed by a series of events afterwards. So what we're going to do is we're going to analyze the first event. 
which includes looks like seven function calls. So again, I'm going to do file clip to selection. Good. And now we just have seven functions in this list. So we're going to go ahead and look at the call list, which shows us the individual function calls. So this is the source address, and this is the destination address, as well as the function call arguments. Now this is sorted by the order in which they occur. So this function occurred first, this function occurred last. So let's try to prevent the first event from occurring. So we can see this destination function is at address 2f3000. So let's go to the function list, and that corresponds to this function here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable this function in hopes that it prevents the lose game code from being executed. So I go here, disable selected function, and it, you can notice it now labels it as disabled. Now let's go ahead, restart the game, and now I'm going to purposely lose by clicking on this mine here. Now you notice it showed all the mines, but it didn't go through the explosion procedure, and it doesn't appear I've lost the game. So I can actually keep on clicking here, and I can actually still win the game. And it says, congratulations, you win. You just won the game. So there we go. That's a very simple hack, which for Minesweeper. But now the problem is, how do you want to, or I, just to show you again, if I select a mine here, and now watch this when I enable this function. You can see it now explodes the functions, and we lose. So now the question is, how do you make a trainer to do this? To make a trainer to do this, it's actually very simple. So I'm going to be used, demonstrating this with a popular program called T-Search. This is a, you can find it online, or you can find the link in the description. It's T-Search version 1.6b. So I'm going to write a simple cheat with this. I attach to Minesweeper, and I'm, I'm going to make a little cheat which disables this function. So to do so, I go ahead and cheat list. I go ahead and this is writing a simple little assembly script, and I specify the address I want to make the code injection which is the function address 2f3000 and what I want to do is how how my program disables the function is that it it takes the return statement and moves it to the very top of the function so as soon as it enters the function it returns but taking the appropriate number of arguments off the stack as well so if you look here, this function had no argument inputs. So that makes it really easy, meaning that we don't need to adjust the stack at all. So instead, we go into our little cheat here, and basically all we have to do is type in return. If it had arguments, for example, like this, this function, if we were disabling this function with two arguments, we would have to do return 8 which would take eight bytes off the stack, which means two arguments off the stack in return. But this one had no arguments, so this oops. so this is how you'd write a simple hack for it in T-Search. And if you want to convert this into a binary now, you, you, you click Trainer Maker, check, and this is saying poke address that C3. So now I'm going to go ahead and test this to make sure it works properly. So we're attached to Minesweeper here, and you can see it's disabled here, so I should be able to lose right now. I'll just double check here. You can see uh, that I can win. Oops, there we go. Enable. So now we can see I can lose the game. So we start the game. Now I use this T search and to apply this code injection, I just press the checkbox. So now I go over here, and now I try to lose, and I can't. So
So now you can go ahead, open this up again, and you just have to implement this little simple cheat in your favorite trainer maker program, and you have a great cheat for Minesweeper now.